Hello and uh, welcome one and all. In this session, we will convert the machine learning model to an API. This is a good way to integrate your machine learning models in other applications. By building a REST API for a model, we can use the model in different platforms, such as a website or a mobile application. Also, this separation allows us to eliminate the dependency on either application. We can independently modify or update either of the applications. We will convert the simple linear regression model and deploy it as a REST API using Flask RESTful. If you haven't checked out the simple linear regression video, then this will be a good time to view it. I will briefly cover the model. In the simple linear regression video, we developed a model that predicts the sale of a company based on the marketing budget. And let me give you the preview of the finished application. This is the front-end web application that consumes the API. We provide the input, the marketing budget, and behind the scene, the API call is made, and we see the input budget amount, then we display the predicted model value. I am displaying the data used for this model, but that's just an extra functionality. This is the final application, and if this packs your interest, then let's start building this app. The model is available as a pickle file on the GitHub repo. I'll grab it and copy it to the base directory of my project, so we can reference it in the API. Now that we have the model file, let's deploy this as a REST API. I'll go ahead and create a new PyCharm project. PyCharm automatically creates a virtual environment for us. And in PyCharm, we can use Python's built-in package manager, pip, to install the libraries. Let's issue pip install commands to install the required libraries. First, we need Flask to create a Flask application. Then we'll install Flask RESTful to create a RESTful API. And next, I'll install Pandas. We'll use Pandas to process the incoming parameter and use it as an input for the machine learning model. Finally, I'll install the Flask cores library. This will help us with the cross-origin resource sharing or when we make an AJAX request from the web application. As usual, let's import the required libraries at the top. To build a Flask API, we will need Flask. So from Flask, we'll import Flask and request. And for the API, we will import Flask RESTful. And from it, we will use the resource and the API. Next, we'll import Pickle and we'll use this to load the model. We'll use pandas for some data processing, so I'll go ahead and import pandas. And finally, I'll import the Flask cores. I'll create an instance of Flask and save it as an app. I'll call the cores for the cross-origin resource sharing and supply it the app. Let's go ahead and create an instance of the API for our app. This will help us with the URL routing and to this object, we'll pass the app instance of Flask. To get the model prediction, let's define a prediction class. This will take resource. Resources are the main building block for the Flask RESTful APIs. Each class can have method that correspond to HTTP method, such as get, post, and put. Get will be the primary method because our objective is to serve model predictions to a web application. In the get method, we pass the incoming budget value from the web application. I'll print the budget amount for testing purpose and convert it to an integer. I'll go ahead and convert the budget amount to a data frame and provide it the label marketing budget. We will use this data frame as an input to the machine learning model. Now it's time to load the model. We will do this with the load function from pickle. Make sure the model file is in the same directory as your Python script. I'll save it to a model variable. Now we can access the predict function from it. And to the predict function, we'll pass the incoming value that we converted as a data frame. Let's get the prediction from the model and from it, get the first index. I'll convert this value to an integer as I don't want the decimal places. 
And finally, from this class, we return the predicted value as a string. Let's go ahead and create an endpoint, and we can do this with add resource function from API. So I'll call the endpoint prediction, and this endpoint will take a parameter, and it will respond to a get request. This endpoint will respond with model prediction based on the incoming budget amount. I'll add the boilerplate code if name equals main, then run the application. This essentially is all the code required for the model prediction. To serve the data to web application, let's create another class. And I'll call this getData. This will also respond to a get request. And in this class, we read an Excel file and save this file into a data frame. I'll convert the data frame to a JSON object, and we will return the JSON from this class. Let's also map this class to an endpoint. And once again, we'll use the add resource function, and I'll map this to an API endpoint. We are done coding the REST API. We can test this using a browser or Postman application. I'll go ahead and save the code. Let's run the API and issue flask run command. In the browser, I'll call the API endpoint and we get data in JSON format. So our API endpoint is working as expected as we get data back from this endpoint. While we are here, let's test the prediction endpoint as well. To this endpoint, we will supply the budget value. Okay, we get a response back, perfect. Our API is ready. Let's integrate it into a web application. I have a vanilla web application written in HTML with some CSS and JavaScript. The main components are the form with an input for budget amount. This is where the user would enter the value. And on the button click, I'm calling a JavaScript function. We display the input and the model predicted value in this section here. The values are set by JavaScript function. So let's scroll down to jQuery. First, I am checking if the input field contains a value. If it does not, we prevent the form from submission. And in the else clause, we remove the values that are displayed in the section above. We get the new incoming budget amount from the input and set it to a H3 tag with section budget ID. Then we make an AJAX call with the API endpoint and append the budget amount to it. If the call is successful, then we access the return value and set it to the section prediction ID. This is the meat of the jQuery AJAX, which integrates our API in this application. Similarly, we can invoke the API endpoint to get the data and we add this data to the table on the web page. I'll go ahead and save this page and open it in a browser. We have our web application up as well as our Flask API is up and running. So let's input a budget amount and click on the predict button. We see our input value displayed on the page and we see the model predicted value as well. This is how we can integrate a machine learning model in a web application. We also have the data printed in a formatted table below. Once this API is deployed, it can be consumed in multiple application. You can use it in web, in desktop application, or in mobile applications. I hope you enjoyed this session as much as I did. This is all for now. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.